poolside with Shane Smith from tritravel.com.au and uh, he's the man when we're talking all things Kona. Shane, thanks for being here. Thanks Phil, it's great to be here. Now, let's talk Kona, the big dance. Uh, everybody focuses an entire season on it. Last year we had uh, breakthrough victory. We had Crowey get uh, up for the males. How do you think he's looking for this year? Yeah, it's interesting. His form's been really good this year, so um, it's going to be hard to bet, bet against him, really. Um, obviously, now that he's won that, once you get a taste of it, it's, he's not going to want to let it go. So I bet you he's in Boulder training probably harder than he's ever trained before getting ready for this event. But of course you've got Macca, who won the year prior, chasing him down as well. And I'm sure the two of them, on paper, look like they're going to go head to head again this year. So. Now, we interviewed Macca a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said that when he sat in the truck, when he got picked up after his disastrous uh, race last year, he watched the lead guys and he saw weakness in them. Yeah, it's interesting. It's very similar to when Welshie won uh, back in 94. Remember in 93 he hurt his knee and he wasn't able to race. He hurt his knee the week, week before the before the event. So he went and sat and watched and watched the way they ate, the way they drank, the, um, the way they were breathing and he saw weaknesses in all those guys. He was able to support that. And um, Macca again, being able to watch that and see that, it, it's probably going to help him this year as well. And I also think he's probably made Last year, what happened to him with his bike uh, mechanical has probably made him even hungrier again. Because once you, again, like I said before, once you've tasted it, that's all you want to do again. You don't want to go there and come second. And it's going to be great for the triathlon public actually to have this race unfold. We kind of missed out last year, yeah, we had this opportunity where it was going to be two Aussies going head to head, but we missed out on it. We didn't get to see it because there's damn cable snapping. And um, I, I'm for one, you can't wait to watch those two go out. It's going to be awesome. And he'll want to change his photo to his finished photo because he had the sponges stuffed down and he yes. didn't like that no, look. No, no, He no, thought he might right. have uh, needed to impress his uh, sponsors a bit more and maybe get the sponges out. But the other contenders <laughs> that we're looking at, I mean, Cam Brown is just this a guy who's been around forever. He's multiple winner of Ironman New Zealand. Uh, we spoke to him yesterday, yeah, yeah. and uh, geez, he looks he looks ready to go. Um, yeah. What are you thinking about him? Someone who's been there and done that. Did he stir you up for not having him in your tips as in the betting I saw on your <laughs> site on the website? So yeah, uh, yeah, no, Cam. Um, a tremendous athlete. I, I still think he's the best person who hasn't won the line in the last five years. So he's the most talented runner out there. He just needs to be able to be close by on the bike and, and give it a shot. So, um, I, I, actually, to be honest, I never bet against Ken Brown. I always <laughs> expect him to be in the top five. I, I always get a surprise when he's not there. Yeah. I just think he's that consistent. So, so but you look at some of the other guys like um, Larnos, who went um, head to head with Maka yeah. the last couple of years over in Germany. Um, I'm not sure how Timo Brack would go, but um, he won obviously Frankfurt, which is the biggest race in Europe, which yeah. all the Germans want to win, all the Euros want to win, and he was the one who came up with Trumps this year. So, so I'm not sure how he'll go though. I, I, he hasn't had great results in Kona before, so yeah, you know, let's just see what happens there. But then of course you've got Norman Stadler. And Where are we with him? Where's Norman at the moment? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's up and down, isn't he? He's, he reminds me a lot of Faris Al Sultan, you know, who yeah. burst onto the scene and. You know, one is uh, one is Iron Man, and we haven't seen a lot from either of those guys in the last couple of seasons. Just the last couple of years, yeah. I suppose Norman. It took Norman ten years to be an overnight sensation, really. So he, he'd won a number of races around town, and he was a world long course champion in duathlon. And he he then come over to triathlon and, and, and stunned the world with his bike riding. But then then his bike riding hasn't seemed to be um, at that point lately. If, uh, like you guys got. Uh, We've got guys like Simbali who started to really attack the, the course. Obviously, he's not racing this year because of his heart condition, or ever again, unfortunately for him. But um, so maybe it, it, it's a year where Norman needs to come back and say, "Hey, here I am," because he's he's had a, a lot of sponsorship. He, he's sponsored by that massive uh, bank in in uh, Germany, and he's got the team around. He's got some great training partners there and the tyres and, yep. and um, those sort of athletes. So he's got all the tools now. To uh, to get back to where he was, but I, I have an interesting theory, and, and, and <laughs> wouldn't be a chat with you without you yeah. floating something like well, that. It just sometimes once you get what you want, the hunger disappears yeah. uh, uh, sometimes. And, and we're here at the ITU World Championships, and you look at some of the the things that happen here with the, the federations. I was talking about this, this morning is that the athletes are, are well looked after these days. They've got their masseurs, their, their doctors, their physios, their nutritionists, they've got a cork and all the rest of it. But it's the guys like, um, who am I thinking of? The old Cam Weedoff, so, and yeah. even the Luke McKenzie at the moment, who yeah. are 
fighting for everything they have to they want yeah. by going out and getting it themselves and that they're out training it hard they're, they're living the life I suppose but they're doing it all by themselves yeah. and that's what Norman was like for a long long time but now this massive sponsorship yeah. is there is the hunger still there now we, hopefully you'll get to watch this and think oh well I'll show you <laughs> and we'll get out there and, and, we'll get a good and I'm sure that'll happen but but it is interesting to see sometimes that when you, you get into that comfort zone and you achieve everything you want, you get the money that you want, the fame that you want, maybe that little bit that, because everything has to be half a percent, especially these days when everyone's yeah, so yeah. good, it might be just enough to sort of take, tip you over the edge where you're not quite as competitive. And if I can take it a step further, it's uh, it's the Rocky analogy, isn't it? You know, whereas, you know, Very you've got Drago so. with all the, you know, Rocky Ford, and you've got him mm. out in the uh, in the woods, pounding uh, yeah, the, right. the wood and getting out there and doing the hard yards. And it's that real hunger for the guys who are on the way up. And yeah, exactly. You mentioned Luke McKenzie, he's definitely one on the way up. But uh, the yeah. last guy I want to talk about is uh, Terenzo Bazzoni, who is the, the young New Zealander who uh, yeah. has been training the house down with uh, Chris McCormack over in Kona. Yep. Spent a lot of time in I don't know if Mac is just blasting him so he's got nothing left when he gets there. Yeah. But he's a smart guy and, and I've heard you say he's the future of the sport. Well, I think so. What I saw in New Zealand this year was amazing in debut. And he, he's a young kid too. Like We, we forget he, he sort of hasn't been around a long time in long course racing. He's, um, he started off as a, an Olympic hopeful for New Zealand and then went on, um, won the World Championships at 70.3 just last year in Clearwater. So it, it, the talent of that kid is boundless and um, I can't wait to see what he's going to do in a couple of years' time. So yeah, he certainly is the future. He's, he's, uh, I think I said in an interview with you after New Zealand, he really has the whole package. You know, He's a, a good looking young bloke, sponsors love him, he's big in New Zealand and that's the one great thing about, about New Zealand, they really look after their endurance athletes and um, you see him, I think when I was over there, we his vlogging plumbing supplies, I think it was, and and, um, and you see Hamish Carter on the back of a Wheaties box yeah. or a Kellogg's box, and that. it doesn't happen here because we're so in Australia because of um, our, our obsession with football yeah. and cricket and yeah. uh, those sorts of sports. But New Zealand has this real affinity with endurance sports, whether it's multi multi sport or triathlon and Ironman and all the rest of it. So um, yeah, look, I, I'd love to see Terenzo go well. He, he seems like a really nice young man and. Um, yeah, it would be good to see the Southern Hemisphere guys take it up to the Euros. Well, it's all to do for our Kona athletes. Uh, check back into firstoffthebike.com for uh, our review, our preview, and also uh, we'll be talking about the women going forward as well. So, uh, Shane, thanks for joining us, and uh, look out for what's to come up.